Are you still using BI Publisher data model to execute ad hoc queries to analyze data and debug issues? Or do you build custom BI reports or OTBI reports to analyze the data to debug the issues with the system? Wouldn't it be much easier if we had a tool like SQL Developer or Toad wherein you could connect to the cloud instance using the tool from your local desktop, execute the ad hoc queries, see the results? Well, seems like you're in luck today and I've got some good news. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on where you guys are. This is Arun, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about a tool that I've been testing for a few days now and talk about the features and functionality of the tool. And this tool allows you to connect to Oracle Cloud Instance, execute your queries, see the results from your local desktop. You don't have to worry about that small, teeny, tiny BA Publisher data model window anymore. If there are other software or utility like this, let me know in the comment section. Uh, I've never used one. This is the first one that I am trying out. If you're using one of these tools, let me know in the comment section. I'll be interested to know about that. All right, without further delay, let's get going, guys. Before we get started looking at the tool, let's look at some of the options that we have in terms of analyzing data or extracting data out of Oracle Cloud ERP, HCM, or SCM modules. So first one is all the reporting tools, right? So we have BI Publisher, OTBI, SmartView, FRS Reports, HCM Extracts. Then you have REST APIs, various REST APIs depending on the module. You have web services. Then you have pass offerings like BICC, BI Cloud Connector, Fusion Analytics Warehouse, Oracle Analytics Cloud, etc. But do we have a tool which you can use from your desktop to connect to the cloud instance and uh, maybe execute queries, ad hoc queries, right? The way you, we used to do in on-prem EBS. So the first thing is, uh, the first question was, can we use SQL Developer to connect to Oracle ERP Cloud? No, unfortunately, you cannot. Um, can we use Toad? Again, the answer is the same. No, we cannot. So that's where I was testing out this software called Cloud Miner. And today we want to take a look at how uh, it's able to connect to Oracle Cloud instance and execute the queries. And we can see some of the features and functionality of the tool. Here's a website for the Cloud Miner software. They are currently offering a free trial. I guess it is 60 days. So the first time when you open the tool, it's going to ask you for the username, password, and the port, which is your in URL to your cloud instance. You have the option to save your connection details, including your password. You also have the recent connections showing up in this uh, window. So I'm going to use the one that I saved earlier. So we are successfully connected to the cloud instance. All right, let's focus on the toolbar up top. So the first one is manage connections. You can create a new connection, enter username, password, um, and, and the URL to your cloud instance. The second is to open a SQL file. So you do have the option of saving the file and opening it, or if you have an existing SQL file, you do have the option of opening that. So let me go ahead and open one. And let's go to Cloud Miner the one that I was testing, and ap.sql. And you can see that there are some SQL queries uh, that I was trying out earlier. Okay, so that allows you to open a SQL file. The third option is to create a new SQL worksheet. So if I click on that, you can see that there's a new SQL worksheet that was created. I can uh, remove that, close that, rename it the way I want it to. The second is to find database objects. So let me copy invoice amount, uh, sorry, AP invoices all table. And let me click on the find database objects and let me paste that AP invoices all and find. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me everything that has a name that starts with AP invoices all. So you can see there's a view, there's a table. And if I click the table, click on open, 
it's going to show me uh, the details of the table, including triggers, indexes, constraints, etc. So here you go. So you have columns, constraints, indexes, triggers, uh, the owner, which is the schema, and the table name. All right. If I click on a view, so AP invoice is all view, I can click open, and that's going to give me the SQL that is used to create that view. And there you go. So you have the SQL, the columns, and the triggers. Obviously the schema and the view name. So that is browse objects. The next one is to execute a query. So if I select this, I can execute the query and it's gonna show me the results. Uh, you can do the same thing here. Uh, within the editor itself, there's an execute option. I can click on that, execute. Right, so I see the results here. It's the same functionality. Uh, I do have the option of executing it and then stopping it if I, if I want to. Go to declaration. So if I want to see more details about an object, so I can select that object and then click on go to declaration. And it's going to give me the details of that object. So it's a view, shows me the columns and the triggers. So pretty easy uh, way to see more details about the object. The next option is to uh, describe. Again, same thing, but it gives you less details than the declaration. It just gives you the uh, the table, the column, a table or view name, the column, the data type, and whether it can be null. All right, the next option is save. So you can save this query as a SQL file. And you do have an option of formatting the SQL. So let's say I had something like this, um, and I can select this uh, SQL statement and click on format. So it, it formats the SQL, which is pretty good. The next is find. So find next, find the previous one, replace options. Uh, you have the option to go to a specific line, zoom in, zoom out, and you have the option of zoom to default, which is this one. Uh, you have the option of uh, case change. So you can change it to uppercase. You can see that I changed to uppercase. Then if I click on the lowercase, it changes to the lowercase. Pretty good. Uh, you can increase, decrease indentation. You can comment and comment. So I can take, select that, comment this out. You can see that it's commented now. I can uncomment that with the click of a button. So that's uh, mostly that I wanted to show on the toolbar. And then if I go into the tools, you have various options that you had that you can set. Uh, so if I go into tools options, this is where I can set up the look and feel, the theme that I want to, uh, that I want to use, the tab size, uh, syntax highlighting, whether it's there or not, uh, highlight matching braces, highlight matching words, highlight current line. So all the options are pretty similar to SQL developer, but less options, I believe. Uh, the next is uh, editor shortcuts. If it's a commonly used SQL statement, you can have shortcuts, uh, short codes, in fact. So let me show you how that works. So I can write SF, uh, that's your short code, and then, then control and enter. So it replaces that with select star from. Uh, same with SCF, which is select count star from. So if I type in SCF and then control enter, gives me select count star from. So pretty easy stuff, you know, very similar to SQL developer and uh, Tor. SQL formatter, we already talked about it, manage connections, you can create, remove connections, you can rename existing connections, uh, etc. That's all I wanted to talk about here. All right, you do have the option of including bind variables. So in this case, you can see that I have a select star from AP invoice is all where invoice number equal to a bind variable. So let me, um, so this is a result. Uh, from from the, this query, the first query in there. So let me copy the invoice number from there. And then if I execute this, it's going to show me the bind variable, the data type that it is, and also the value. Now this is the value that I used in my previous session. So it, it remembers that. So let me click apply. It brings me back that specific invoice number. So bind variables can be used, pretty useful. Uh, let me execute this query. All right, coming into this lower um, section, 
you have the query output and the script output. Script output is where you see all the messages, system messages, any error messages that you see will be here. The query output is very similar to SQL developer. So you have this output, you have the option of switching between single record view and table view. So if I click here, it takes me to the single record view. You can click on this uh, next record button to navigate through the records or you can go to the last but last record using this go to last record option or the first one. You also have the option of export uh, as Excel spreadsheet, HTML, CSV, text file, and delimited text. Well, let me switch back to the table mode. Do you have the search option here? You see that find column, and this is where you select a specific column if you want to search by that specific column. What if I don't give anything? Let's say I want to uh, look at uh, 12117B, right? So let me s type that in, and you can see that it is good enough to identify or search for that um, text or string and return me uh, records that has that string. Now, um, let me search for maybe um, one, two, right? So it, it returns me everything that matches that uh, string, one, two. Uh, you can see some are in voice number fields, some are in the distribution amount field. So it searches for everything. Let's say I want to search for a string in a specific column. So in that case, uh, I'm going to select the column name. So in this case, I want invoice underscore num. And let's say I want to search for 1a. And you can see that it, it filters the result based on that string in the invoice number column. So pretty good, uh, pretty good feature and you have the record numbers here. That's all I wanted to show you today. I hope this is helpful. Again, I have never used another tool like this before. So if you have used a tool similar to this, um, let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this on ERP Cloud and EPM, please consider subscribing. Again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Let me know your suggestions and feedback as well. All right, that's it for this one. I'll talk to you all in the next one. Take care and bye.